Coming up on Ag Week TV. Planting is progressing better than expected and better than last year here in the Western Corn Belt. The coronavirus crisis is causing problems for custom harvesters. Area food shelves get a big donation of potatoes that were meant for area restaurants. And Ag Economist Dr. David Cole discusses how agriculture will recover from COVID-19. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. This week, President Trump signed an executive order declaring meatpacking plants as critical infrastructure under the Defense Production Act. Under the order, processing plants must remain open or resume processing of animals despite coronavirus outbreaks. Workers will also get protective gear under OSHA guidelines. It's an effort to mitigate food supply concerns and could help avoid more euthanizing of hogs. Cattle producer and attorney Todd Wilkinson says the order will also provide liability protection to processors over the risk that employees contract the virus at work. The packers are going to have to have a reason why that plant isn't open. And I've, I've heard lots of producers asking for this to happen for the last three weeks. Frankly, I'm, that's a pretty big gun and I'm surprised um, that it happened. But as a as a cattle producer, uh, I think it's great so we don't continue to stack up inventory. South Dakota Pork Producers Council Officer Shane Odegaard says his industry has been hit the hardest with plant closures, and the executive order is the relief they desperately need. That'll be good news for producers here in South Dakota, but it's also good news across the industry. Why? Because, I mean, our, we've lost so much packing capacity in the last few weeks that hogs are getting backed up, and, and hopefully with this executive order from President Trump that we can get these other plants back opened up. For pork especially, the situation has caused an estimated 160,000 hogs per day to be backed up on farms. USDA reports indicated hog slaughter capacity is down around 37 percent from a year ago and cattle slaughter is down around 31 percent. Avis is establishing a national incident coordination center to help producers who can't market animals due to plant closures. The center, state veterinarians, and other state officials are helping identify potential alternative markets and advise and assist on depopulation and disposal methods. APHIS will deploy assets at the National Veterinary Stockpile if needed and secure the services of contractors just like it did during the avian influenza outbreak in 2015. The Department of Labor and the Centers for Disease Control have also issued new guidelines for meatpacking and processing plants that have seen a rash of COVID-19 outbreaks. They recommend employees be spaced at least six feet apart and be screened before they start working. The CDC also issued a report citing its health and safety recommendations for plants like Smithfield Foods to reopen in Sioux Falls. They said one of the major problems there was providing information to workers who speak roughly 40 different languages. The JBS pork plant in Worthington, Minnesota is euthanizing market hogs that can't be processed there with the facility closed due to COVID-19. House Ag Committee Chair Colin Peterson and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz held a news conference there Wednesday to discuss the situation. Peterson requested JBS open their CO2 building to help euthanize hogs. They re-engineered the plant to use the same processes for slaughter to euthanize roughly 13,000 hogs a day. That's far short though of the 70 to 100,000 hogs a day that can't be processed in the country. It's not as if things were great in ag country pre-COVID-19, but now they're horrific. And now they're in just a horrific choice of trying to humanely depopulate these hogs, but at the same time figuring out how do we get these plants up and running to process those hogs. Most carcasses will go to landfills with some rendered at the plant or incinerated. Peterson is working with USDA and the Minnesota Department of Agriculture to get compensation for producers for their losses. One town in southeast Minnesota is helping farmers and agribusinesses hit by the pandemic. Winona County has been hit hard by the virus, but the head of the Area Chamber of Commerce says the organization has been trying to help. Christy Ransom, president of the Winona Area Chamber of Commerce, recently spoke to Senator Amy Klobuchar about how local livestock operations are suffering from disruptions in the food supply chain. We're working really um, specifically to help our dairy farmers and um, even the crop producers that are dealing with issues with ethanol. Ransom says they're also finding ways to help ag producers through other businesses. The North Dakota State Mill has seen a big shift in where their products go since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The mill in Grand Forks is the largest wheat flour mill in the nation and the only state-owned mill in the U.S. It grinds 33 million bushels of spring wheat in Durham a year, which is shipped all over the country. Mill President and CEO Vance Taylor says after a surge in demand, they've cut production from six days a week to four or five. Initially, a few weeks ago, we had a big uh, surge in uh, overall demand uh, from most of our customers. You know, in the last few weeks, many of our customers that service the restaurant trade uh, due to the restaurant closures, that's uh, backed off a bit. But the, uh, the Durham business and the retail business uh, still remains uh, very strong. Taylor says their retail website business jumped since stay-at-home orders went into place in many states. The mill has also given 5,000 five-pound bags to the Great Plains Food Bank, as well as donations to North Dakota reservations. Coming up on Ag Week TV, an expert talks about how long it will take for agriculture to recover from COVID-19. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every size operation from Meridian, Unverfirth, and J&M. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery. Uptime is crucial. Keep your crew in the field longer with a fuel trailer from Thunder Creek. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used inventory or give us a call. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH certified technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. Modal's Truck and Trailer Sales builds customized trailers to fit farmers' needs. Whether you're spraying, fertilizing, or planting, we build 28-foot two-tank trailers all the way up to 48-foot four-tank trailers and plenty in between, including field-ready drop decks, flatbeds, and enclosed reefer trailers. We have plenty of inventory ready to go at our Wheaton, Minnesota location, but if you don't see what you're looking for at modalsales.com, give us a call and we'll talk about building you the perfect trailer. The global nature of the COVID-19 outbreak has pushed the entire agricultural industry into crisis. One expert that's been predicting this kind of black swan event for more than 20 years is ag economist Dr. David Cole. I visited with him about if and when farmers will recover. It's going to go through three stages. Uh, the black swan dirty bird dumped on us, uh, you know, late February, early March, and it'll last until oh, probably about the 1st of May. And we're kind of in a sense of shock, don't know quite where to go, et cetera, et cetera. What's going to occur, Michelle, from about May 1st to the end of the year, the black swan's going to turn to an angry bird. And here's the point, and it's going to impact agriculture. We're going to start really questioning, uh, do we want to get everything from China? We're going to kind of question any of the plans that come out of Washington, D.C., or the state, or even the local government. And we'll move into this period of bickering, and it'll get kind of nasty emotionally. And then 
I see it a kind of occurring uh, in 2021. It's the rise of the phoenix, the mythical bird. In other words, we'll move into the creative part. In other words, we'll take a lemon and turn it to lemonade. And so I really think a lot of our young and beginning farmers and ranchers out here, uh, possibly because they're very entrepreneurial, they'll have the solution for this. How long does it take us to recover? How long's the tail? All of the talking heads wanted me to say it was going to be a V-shaped recovery. I see it a Nike swoosh uh, will, will gradually come back. But you see, 70% of the Western countries, including us, uh, is driven by a consumer. 40% of that 70% has been taken right out. <laughs> okay? We're at home. We are not traveling. I'm not on the airlines. And so until we get enough confidence in our medical system and until you get confidence in this job sector and small business, you're not going to see this economy come back. With the planting season underway, some farmers are finding labor shortages. With air travel restrictions tied to COVID-19, that's making it difficult for foreign workers to get into the U.S. In this week's Ag Week cover story, Michael Pates talks to the owner of one of the nation's largest custom farming operations who relies on help from South Africa. I've got 30 here and 30 more over there. What do you do when half of your combine crew is left in South Africa? Usually, Chad Olson's biggest worry in a custom harvesting season is weather. But this year, another big issue is labor. Olson runs 9 to 10 crews for up to 200 farmers, and he's been fielding lots of calls from worried clients. With help from family and friends and college people, we'll, we'll be covered for the month of June and July if we can't get these guys here. It's just going to be tough for me. Kristen Pastoria started as a guest worker for Olson. He's a permanent resident now, but his brother Dion is one of those waiting to come over. We need to put corn in the ground and keep feeding America, but the guys that's back home, they're really pondering the decision to come over and when it's going to be, so we're just trying to tell them to just hang in there. The visas are good for just over nine months. No matter how late they get here, they have to leave December 15th. And before they can start working, they have to get driver's licenses, which takes six weeks. If we don't have enough legal drivers, a lot of people aren't going to get their crops out of the field. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to run illegal, but a lot of people won't do that. And I don't want to be one doing that. So until they open up South Africa, companies like Olson Custom Farming will have to work from Plan B. For Ag Week, this is Michael Pates at Hendricks, Minnesota. And you can read more about it in Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Still ahead on our show, planting is underway and ahead of schedule in some parts of the Western Corn Belt. Ready for more? The new Fent 900 Vario is impressive on every level. With groundbreaking features, you'll be ready for everyday challenges now and in the future. New smart connectivity solutions make the Fent 900 series from Butler Machinery an intelligent choice for your farm. We're also proud to carry the Fent Ideal, a new combine for a new era of farming. Designed to be automated in operation, the Ideal Combine is already setting industry standards for efficiency and output. Visit butlermachinery.com to schedule a demo at your operation. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. Be ready for the challenging field conditions you face with the Summers VRT Renegade. With on-the-fly adjustment, including blade angle from 0 to 19 degrees, the VRT Renegade gives you unprecedented flexibility for the field results you want, spring or fall. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about the VRT Renegade and North America's broadest line of tillage equipment from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. 
Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. After a disastrous planting season in 2019 and record prevent plant acres, many farmers in the western Corn Belt were bracing for the worst this spring. However, Mother Nature has been much more cooperative, allowing planting to progress ahead of schedule in many areas. As of Monday, Iowa and Minnesota were nearly 20% ahead of average at 39 and 40% done. In Nebraska, planting was 20% complete versus the 16% average. Even South Dakota was slightly ahead of schedule at 8% done. Farmers say it's been a phenomenal spring. The guys are doing soybeans already, so it's been a spring like I've, we've all wanted for years and haven't had for a while, and so it's making it fun. I'd say we're ahead by three weeks compared to last year. Last year at this time we had snow on the ground and we couldn't do not until May the 7th. We're 90% planted here at one field left, um, been going end to end, perfect conditions. Even with the ideal planting conditions, there are farmers that switched some acres from corn to wheat or soybeans over the last month due to the steep drop in corn prices tied to lower ethanol demand. So will the fast planting pace we've seen in much of the western Corn Belt continue? Here's John with our Agri Weather Outlook. Weather portion of Ag Week now. We move on into the middle part of May. Planting season gets into full high gear in the northern plains. Starts wrapping up down across the Corn Belt. The patterns are this way. Generally cool to mild uh, weather. Not a lot of heat, not a lot of cold anywhere. We may see a few frosts in the north, but that is still typical as we go through early and mid-May. And generally, I would say, categorize this as a dry pattern. Not to say there won't be any rain anywhere, but it will be likely overall Middle part of the country is going to be a little lower than average with one significant change taking place at the end of this discussion around the middle part of May. Jet stream this week is fairly flat. Meandering from west to east means that the cold air is mostly up in the very high latitudes. Alaska, the higher latitudes of Canada have been extremely cold this spring, but we're not seeing a lot of that trickle down into southern Canada at this time. And the really hot weather is confined mostly to Texas and the deserts in the southwest, the Mojave Desert, so we're not seeing a lot of heat coming up through the middle of the country and certainly not at all in the Middle West. There will be a general sagging in the jet stream in the eastern part of the United States this week. That's going to send some relatively cool weather down through the Corn Belt and it's going to stay that way for a while. It will recover toward the end of this and they're leaving me cold enough for a few frosts in some areas especially around the Great Lakes and into the Northern Plains. There will be setting up by this weekend a little bit of ridging in the west and that's going to set up a little northwest flow which is going to make a tricky forecast because if this shifts a few hundred miles east or a few hundred miles west of where I've depicted it here, you could get very warm weather for a few days into the northern plains or some relatively chilly weather backing in. That's something to keep an eye on. So that's as we move into the weekend. As the weekend turns into next week, that jet stream will begin to flatten. Chillier weather will become more west to east oriented and the warm weather will continue mostly confined to the far southwest and the southern states. As the trough in the east begins to lift, we'll see the heat building up a little bit into the southeast as the week goes along. And it looks like as we head toward the end of this period here, around the uh, in middle part of May, going to start to see an interesting pattern that could be leading toward the first southern plains severe weather outbreak of the season. It looks like we're setting up for that in about the end of the two-week period. This week there will be some rains in the northern plains but not substantial, not widespread, not sustained. But Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday could be a little wet. Showers and thunder showers through the Corn Belt mostly of just a scattered variety. The second week of the period, there we go. The southern plains, that pattern looks stormy to me. The rest of the nation, east coast, northern plains, Rockies and west, not saying there won't be any precipitation but it looks like just kind of scattered stuff at best. So it's not a very wet pattern for the Northern Plains and Corn Belt. Good for getting planting wrapped up and moving forward. Hopefully there'll be enough rain for germination. The stormy weather looks like it'll be in the south. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, 
Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. 2020 has started off where 2019 left off with a lot of uncertainty and concern. Is your farming operation ready to take the volatility this year has to offer? Do you have a marketing plan in place to take advantage of opportunity? Are you finding it hard to separate the noise from the news? Talk to the professionals at Martinson Ag. We can help you make sound risk management decisions that will help your operation survive during these unusual times. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every size operation from Meridian, Underfirth, and J&M. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery. Uptime is crucial. Keep your crew in the field longer with a fuel trailer from Thunder Creek. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used inventory or give us a call. Strong buildings and strong communities start with strong connections. Butler builders understand this, the importance of every piece and every part. Every bolt, every beam, and every handshake. Each connection, a strong one. Built on quality and trust. Built on people. For more information, go online to gatewaybuilding.com. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Coronavirus restrictions seem to have sparked a renewed interest in gardening this season. Katie Pinky has some tips for getting started with a horticulture expert. Joining me now is NDSU horticulturist Esther McGinnis. You have an interesting background that led you to horticulture. Well, my background has not been a straight path. I went to law school at the University of Minnesota and then became an attorney in St. Paul, practiced for 10 years, but discovered I had this passion for horticulture. How would you recommend somebody get started in gardening this season? Well, don't overdo it. Start small. You may want to start in some containers, you know, try and grow some uh, tomatoes in a container, um, pepper plants, maybe some of the leaf lettuces. You know, you could plant those about this time, but the nice thing with the leaf lettuces is that you don't have to wait until a full head develops. You can actually harvest individual leaves as you need them and that plant will, con will continue to grow. Or you may want to start with a raised garden bed that's small, maybe four feet by four feet. And the advantages of a raised garden bed is that you can build it up so you don't have to bend over. Tell us about the interest in Victory Gardens. Well, the interest is really rising among gardeners. We're really kind of trying to replicate what we did in World War II, where we all banded together to help others and to also produce food for ourselves. People um, planting extra rows so that we can donate to food pantries. Because we are seeing this huge demand for uh, food from the food pantries, and they really don't have huge amounts of fresh produce donated to them. You know, so we, we want to fill the void and help individuals that are less fortunate, that may be unemployed or are food insecure. Esther McGinnis, you've given us a lot to think about. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Katie. A local potato giant puts unneeded restaurant food to good use. The story's next on Ag Week TV. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage
Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Egg Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories, along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. Every day, we're challenged. The coronavirus. Challenged to remain strong for our families, resilient for our businesses, and brave for our communities. And the power to overcome these challenges lies in what can't be taken away. Welcome, Governor Burgum. Our ability to share ideas, the innovative ways to do business, the generosity from our neighbors, and the kindness of strangers inspire and prepare us for greatness tomorrow. I'm Jenny Garth. And as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Thousands of pounds of potato products that were processed originally for restaurants are now going to those in need. Lamb Weston and RDO Frozen Foods donated 37,000 pounds of frozen potato puffs to the Great Plains Food Bank this week. Great Plains President Melissa Sobolik says they've seen demand increase as much as 50% during the pandemic. This truckload is coming in at a time when we need it the most. We have a lot, a lot of people who are turning to us who have never turned to us before. And with food donations going down and it getting harder and harder to get that product in, when we can see a truckload of potatoes come in, we are all smiles. The potatoes will be distributed across North Dakota and Clay County, Minnesota. Two Ag Week reporters have won national recognition for their work. The North American Agricultural Journalists awarded Jonathan Knutz in first place for his column, Plain Living, and for the second year, he was a finalist for Agriculturalist of the Year. Mikkel Pates placed second in the series competition for his story on Jerry Hennessy, the former manager of the Ashby, Minnesota Grain Elevator, who admitted to stealing $5 million from the elevator. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.